Uh, boy, this is an engineer's dream, public speaking in front of a thousand people. Woo <laughs> um, anyways, I'm here to talk to you about uh, something kind of near and dear to my heart, which is how we as technologists actually have a very critical role, I would say the critical role, in ensuring that our companies remain relevant in the future. And what that really means is making sure that the solutions that we provide for our customers keep pace with technology disruptions. So um, for some of you that are back in my generation, think back to 1984. It actually wasn't obvious that the PC would be the thing that would drive economic growth and productivity to levels unprecedented since the Industrial Revolution. But by 1988, it was, just four years later. I remember in the mid-'80s, my first job out of college, when my group got our first PC, our team PC. Eight of us shared it. It sat in a conference room, and we signed up for time. It was a really exciting day. But by 1988, we all had PCs sitting on our desks, and by the early 90s, we had them sitting on our laps, and they went with us wherever we went. In 94, early 94, Netscape hadn't even been founded yet. But four years later, by 1998, it was obvious that this was the era of the web, and the web fundamentally changed everything. And if we fast forward to early 2004, Facebook didn't exist yet. And yet, by 2008, social networks were the fastest growing segment of software companies and just completely disrupted how people use the internet. Internet, Everything from how you connect to classmates, but how you connect to friends, how you find a job, how you find somebody to change your roof, right? It just changed the world. Now, what's interesting when you look across these is that these aren't examples of new technology uh, solving new problems. What they are is looking at new technology and how it fundamentally enables us to solve better the age-old problems. And if history repeats itself, we're in 2014. There's something nascent out there today that by 2018 is going to fundamentally change the world as we know it. And the question is, will the company you be at now, the company you're at now, will it thrive? Will it leverage that to create better and fundamentally new solutions for your customers? Or will they end up in the earlier parts of my slide four years from now? Let's dive a little deeper. For those of you of my generation, how many of you remember this? The Franklin Planner. OK, a few of you. If you were back in my generation from the mid-'80s through the mid-'90s, you could not walk into a meeting room where people didn't walk in with their binders and open it up, and everybody had a Franklin Planner. And we used them to manage our schedules, our contacts, and our to-do lists. And boy, they were a heck of a lot better than a plain piece of paper or a notebook. But they had some fundamental problems. Every day, I'd have to come in and look at yesterday's list, the things I didn't get done, turn to the next day, and manually rewrite those things in. Once a month, I had to go get the new month's list, uh, group of papers, put them into my binder, and go manually re-enter all my recurring meetings. And God forbid somebody rescheduled a recurring meeting to a different time, and I had to go back through and cross all those out, and re-enter them again. It was really kind of a pain. And then came the wonderful thing called the pilot. I was one of the early adopters of this, because I saw, wow, this fundamentally is going to save me literally hours every month. Franklin didn't figure this out. They didn't realize that technology would have let us better solve how people are managing their scheduling, their to-dos, and their technology. They didn't understand that pain point. And I don't know about you, but I don't know anybody today that uses a Franklin. Right Now, Palm also missed the boat. Palm missed the boat in a slightly different way. They missed that technology was fundamentally changing how their customers lived their lives, how they communicated with each other. The advent of email and mobile phones fundamentally changed how we communicated both online and offline with work colleagues, with friends, and everybody. And so when the smartphones came out, Palm went by the wayside. They weren't at the front of that. And, you know, when the iPhone came out in 2007, then, you know, we all know where we are now and where the prior three of these are. 
They're sitting in museums, some in the tech museum, but nobody's using them today, and those companies are not the leaders in their spaces any longer. So there's two things that I have observed in companies that have successfully uh, survived across disruption, and not only survived, but thrived across disruption. They're very, very simple things. One is really, really, truly understanding your customer and the lives they lead. It sounds simple. The second is keeping your eye on the future and constantly imagining what this means to your customer and what it can mean to how you can provide a better sol solution. Let's dive a little bit into customer empathy. Now, this is probably where I'm going to sound biased, but as an engineer coming out of uh, school, I was told early on, this is a product manager. They will go understand the customer, and they'll tell you what to build, and you as the engineer, go build it. And I would premise that any company that runs that way today is one that doesn't survive disruption, because at the pace that technology is disrupting everything, if the technologists don't fundamentally and viscerally understand the customer problem, they, the company is not going to be fastest and first, or even early, to understand how emergent disruptions can better solve those existing customer problems. So it's us as technologists that really have to understand the customer and be looking at how can technology better solve those uh, problems or those needs in ways nobody could have imagined otherwise. How do you do this? How do you develop customer empathy? Again, it's not really rocket science. It's pretty simple. At Intuit, uh, something Scott Cook has been doing for 30 years is something called uh, Follow Me Homes. It's a little creepy these days, uh, but, but creepiness aside, what it really means is observing your customer in their environment, doing the kinds of things that they interact with when using your product. Instead of just listening to what they tell you they need, which is going to be within their scope of understanding of what you might be able to solve for them, observe them in their environment trying to use the product. It will, you will get unbelievable um, uh, uh, understanding of what they deal with, and you can think of ways that you can better solve those problems they themselves wouldn't think about. You can also do things like, you know, obviously using your own products is important, using your customers' products is important and experimenting early with your customers. All three are critical, they're very simple, they're easy to do, but they're things you need to be doing every day, every week, every month. Keeping an eye on the future, this is something probably easier for us as technologists, although I find it's not something we always do real well. You know, um, Intuit is one of those companies that survived for over 30 years and continued to be a leader in its space. Um, it, our founder, Scott Cook, started the company when he observed his wife sitting at the kitchen table trying to resolve her checkbook using Excel, and it was painful. And hence, Quicken Desktop was born many years ago. I was an early Quicken user. Um, QuickBooks didn't follow long after that. And again, they leveraged computers and software specifically tuned for managing your financial lives in ways that let you do things you couldn't just do with Excel. But newer disruptions came along, the internet, the cloud, mobile devices, and they enable us now to provide even better solutions that allow clients, for example, accountants to connect with their clients, to share documents, to allow employers to pay their employees, and allow the employees to get online paychecks and be able to see and aggregated information in ways they couldn't have ever done before. And so it's been really important for us to keep an eye on what is emergent and how can we leverage that to fundamentally provide better solutions to those age-old customer problems. We're not done. Uh, over up in Mountain View at Intuit, you can at any point in time find teams that are in their structured time are looking at wearables, glass, the connected car. How might these, over the next three to four years, change our customers' lives? And what might these enable us to do for our customers that we can't do today with given technology? And so that's, that, keeping that focus on that is very, very important. So with that, um, two things. As technologists, I real appeal, really appeal to you. If you want to keep your companies relevant, you need to be the one to take responsibility for understanding and developing and maintaining that deep customer empathy 
and to constantly be keeping an eye on where technology is going and reimagining how is it going to change my customers' lives four or five years from now, and how can I leverage that to fundamentally provide new solutions that people can't even think about today. So that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>